Welcome to the Voca Society's devotional video series. My name is Rachel Tenney, and I'm a wife, mama, and small business owner that believes that the gospel applies to every area of life and that keeping our eyes on Jesus changes how we do business. This series is all about coming alongside you in your work life specifically and exploring how theology can be applied to your everyday challenges. So let's dig in. When the podcast ends, do you immediately have to fill that space, or does your heart enjoy a moment of prayer? When you lay in your bed, does your mind spin with anxiety over business projects, or rest in a sovereign God? When you wake up in the morning, do you fill your heart with Jesus, or do you jump right into work? I've done all of those things. (laughs) But there are two ways to be an entrepreneur. The first way is to work from a place of self-reliance and striving. I call it eating the bread of anxious toil. The phrase comes from Psalm 127 too, and it says, It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives to his beloved sleep. Bread is what we're supposed to eat to sustain us. So the bread of anxious toil is when we believe the lie that our effort is sustaining us. And of course, if it's our effort that sustains us, we can never rest, lest our lives come apart at the seams. We have to hold it all together. We have to keep all the plates spinning. It's exhausting. Are you as familiar with this bread as I am? Are you tempted to skip your Bible reading because you just have so much to do today? Do you work long hours, never feeling like you can do enough? Do you feel like you always need to be doing something productive? I certainly do. Jesus gives us another kind of bread. John 6, 35. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. All of us are eaters. (laughs) It isn't a question of whether you will eat bread this week, but which bread you will be eating. Just as we are all worshipers, we are all hungerers looking for sustenance. Will our hearts find rest in Jesus or will we continue to eat the bread of anxious toil? I can't help but think of another bread as well, the bread of communion that reminds us of Jesus' body broken for us. I love that Jesus knows how weak and fragile we are, and he gave us a visible reminder of his sacrifice. It's a reminder that it's only because of what Jesus has accomplished that we can rest from our works. I used to live my life on this kind of bread, the bread of anxious toil. Let me let you in on that journey that God took me on in my business. So I first started my business with high hopes. I had been studying entrepreneurship for a while and listening to podcasts on my commute to work, and I was eager to finally get to own my own business. This is the year, I thought. This is the year I'm going to really meet my goals and create an amazing business. But my eyes weren't on Jesus. My eyes were on the influencers whose podcasts I listened to. I wanted to have a business from selfish motives because I wanted to fashion a certain kind of lifestyle for myself. And a lot of those motivations were good. Financial freedom, more time with my family, the ability to give to those in need. There were many good reasons to want a successful business, but my hope wasn't in the God who gives those gifts. My hope was in the gifts themselves. I was emulating the women whose lives I wanted to copy and paste into mine. I wasn't really open to God having a different plan for me. I had essentially taken the steering wheel of my life and I was going to make this business happen by sheer willpower. The boss babe world is marked by a lot of toxicity, mysticism, misaligned work-life balance, and selfishness. I did my best to weed through the blatantly unbiblical parts, but I still ended up believing some of those lies of that culture, like... I believed the lie that I needed to hustle for my own success instead of seeing that God is a God of generosity and grace and that he was the one who gives success. It is not earned, even though we do work for it. And that lie led me to overworking and then burnout, followed by shame because of my failure. I also compared myself to the highlight reels of others on Instagram and told myself that I was a failure and that everyone else wasn't struggling as much as I was. And while my words would never say that I was building my own empire, my actions reflected that heart posture, and I left God out of my business decisions. In fact, sometimes I was so scared to pray because I was afraid that God would have a different answer than I wanted, and so I avoided praying about anything regarding my business. 
I believed the lie that my lack of success was because I wasn't believing in myself enough and I just needed to pump myself up with more motivational quotes. All of these lies led me to a place of anxiety, burnout, (laughs) discouragement, and shame. But God had his own plans for me, plans that were so much better than my own. Not only was it a tumultuous year, but I also became unexpectedly pregnant with our first child. I had always been excited to be a mom, so it was an exciting change, but it threw my plans out the window and I struggled for much of my pregnancy with intense sickness, fatigue, perinatal depression, and it just hadn't been what I had planned. As the year came to a close, I took maternity leave to bring my beautiful daughter into the world and adjust to a new season of motherhood. After a few months of maternity leave, I began to think about going back to entrepreneurship, and I realized that a desperate feeling had begun to sink into my heart. I could not keep doing business as I had been. I had to change the way I was operating. My eyes had been so focused on my own success and self-aggrandizement instead of on serving Jesus and others. I really honestly felt betrayed by my own selfishness. Something in me had finally broken and come to the end of myself. I was unwilling to let my discouragement kill my entrepreneurial heartbeat. I could feel that God was still pulling on that and still wanted me to pursue that, but I was unwilling to do business in my own strength any longer. I just couldn't. I'm going to read you an excerpt from my private journal from that time. I don't want to run my business in my own strength. I want to run it for you, Jesus as an arm for you to use to serve people. I want my business to only do what you would have me do. If you want me to serve, then empower me to serve. Animate this dead branch. If you don't want me in business, I don't want to do it. So just use me however you wish. But if you do want me to do this, then let me carry out your will, not mine. Let me be your ambassador. May my business be part of your mission and what you're doing in the world. I'm a desperate creature. I'm either desperately trying to control things or I'm desperately trying to throw myself upon your grace. I'm desperate for you. I'm too weak, too broken, too frail, and too fragile to do this on my own. I'm not enough of a self-starter. I'm not charismatic enough, not outgoing enough, not driven or creative enough. I don't love putting myself out there. I'm not confident. I'm not enough in my own strength. But you are enough. You can give me everything and more than I need for this endeavor. Help me to steward this business for you. Those words let you into a little piece of where I was. I felt so desperate that I just could not continue doing business as I had been. And my heart just longed for Jesus. I was tired of the constant striving. I was tired of feeling like my spiritual life and my business life were disjointed. I was tired of building something that God wasn't really in. At the end of the year, I bought a coffee mug that says, this is my year. But the word my is crossed out and written next to it is the word his. So it reads, this is his year. It will continue to sit on my desk and remind me of the lesson that that year taught me, that the mind of a man plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps, Proverbs 16, 9. So that's what started me on my journey of exploring what it means to be dependent on Christ while running a business with excellence. I wanted Jesus to infuse every last inch of my workday and my business. I'm still on that journey, and I know that I'm never going to arrive, as the Apostle Paul says in Philippians 3, 12. Not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. It's actually through business that I have learned the secret of abiding in Christ and relying on his strength daily because business is where my self-reliance rears its ugly head the most. There is a different way to do business. My business has gone from one marked by striving to one marked by joy. And yours can too. Together, let's discover what that looks like.